Hello World History, Mr. Klaus here. I continue to miss you guys and hope that you're all doing well. Um, I wanted to briefly introduce this week's lesson uh, in video format. I think it's sometimes easier to tell a story. So um, this lesson, uh, which will extend into next week actually, there's going to be part two to the same lesson, hinges on a uh, rock song called We Didn't Start the Fire which came out in 1989 and um, is a favorite of history teachers because it's a history song. Uh, some songs kind of obliquely refer to historical events, but this one's very literal. And, um, and anyway, so history teachers tend to love this song. So it came out in 1989. It was written by an artist named Billy Joel, who you may or may not have heard of, but he was a big uh, recording artist in the 70s and 80s. Uh, had a lot of stuff that uh, that people liked, um, you know, was routinely nominated for Grammys and that sort of thing. And this song was nominated for Song of the Year as a finalist for that Grammy. It did not um, win, but uh, it was a finalist. Anyway, so Billy Joel is a very interesting artist. He is um, classically trained and loves, even today, playing Beethoven and things like that. He actually retired from rock for a while to... Um, write new classical style music. Um, but uh, anyway, he wrote the song and uh, he, uh, when you read, if you go back and read the story of how the song came about, he was, uh, he was in a recording studio um, and uh, was working on some stuff as an older guy, a guy maybe my age. Um, and uh, this, this uh, he was also in the studio was Sean Lennon. Uh, Sean Lennon is the son of John Lennon of Beatles fame and Yoko Ono. And so anyway, one of Sean Lennon's friends was sitting in there complaining how it was a terrible time to be a 21 year old and just how and all this stuff that was going bad. And um, so it was a bad society. Um, and, uh, and Billy Joel yeah, said, yeah, I remember when I was 21 and um, I thought the same things about the world. And this, uh, this young man said, well, uh, but you live back in the 50s. Like, you didn't, you, everybody knows nothing actually, you know, no, there were no bad things happening then. And Billy Joel thought, well, there were plenty of bad things. We had the Korean War. We had all these other, you know, problems going on, major international conflicts and near wars and things like that. So anyway, um, he reflected on how each, um, each era seems to have its own problems. Um, and uh, I think that this is an apropos lesson for us because right now, um, you are probably thinking, and you'd be justified in thinking that like, wow, the world is awful, and um, this quarantine thing, and COVID, things will never be the same, and um, you know, maybe you're thinking it's kind of a rough uh, and, and you know, terrible time to be alive. Um, but in a lot of ways, the emotions you're experiencing are not that different from what people your age experienced, uh, your parents experienced when they were your age, or your grandparents, and and back and back we go. And certainly, there've been some periods when it's been you know, more peaceful than others, I guess. But um, his point in this song is that uh, that there's always stuff going on, good and bad, and uh, there's always crises, there's always wars, there's always um, antisocial behaviors, there's also always challenges to the culture of an era. And so anyway, he uh, this is where he got the idea for this song, and he sat down and wrote it out. Now, musically, it's not a terribly clever song, and even Billy Joel has said in interviews that if he looks at the different music he's written over the years, um, that you know from a from like a melody standpoint, um, this song is pretty low and, and there's not much to it compared to a lot of the other stuff he's written. Um, but it's the lyrics that stand out and uh, that are the reason that it's kind of held on so well. Um, so the, what he did with the lyrics is he decided to use a for, a forty year span. Uh, so he's writing the song in 1989. So the song spans from 1949 to 1989. And what he did is he thought about the most important events and things going on in, in, a, in each particular year between them. And um, some of these things are very serious things like the Korean War, the Vietnam War. Some of them are more crazy things like... Um, you know, random people shooting up college campuses. Um, some of them are joyful, like, you know, different baseball teams winning or, um, you know, different movies that everybody loved. Um, and some of them are, are not terribly joyful and, uh, you know, drug addictions and horrible diseases and things like that. So um, anyway, his he didn't really restrict the sorts of events. It's not just serious historical things like the Vietnam War. Um, but it's also, in some ways, silly things like 
Coke and Pepsi having a marketing war by getting rock and roll stars to advertise their products, which was a huge thing in the late 80s. Um, and uh, anyway, so he, um, he also took, and then each line of the song um, is a list of events from a particular year. So when you listen to the song, just listen to where, where like the singer would have to breathe, and that is a shift of one year. Um, and uh, the style of the song is what we call a list song. Basically, it just goes through and lists stuff. Um, there's not a lot of verbs. There's not a lot of commentary on the things. There's just a list of important historical stuff. Um, so uh, again, it starts in 1949. And so you'll hear Harry Truman, Doris Day, Red China, Johnny Ray, South Pacific, Walter Winchell, Joe DiMaggio, and then breathe. <gasps> 1950, Joe McCarthy, Richard Nixon, Studebaker, Television, North Korea, South Korea, Marilyn Monroe. And then there's a pause and you'll get to 1951, 52, and so on through the song. And then there's a chorus that uh, ties it together. But um, each each breath, essentially, is one calendar year. Um, and uh, his point in the song is that there's always there's always good, there's always bad, and every generation feels like it's uh, it's it's new to them. Um, but those of us that have been around know that it's that it's always happened, whether it's your generation or my generation or rewinding even further, Billy Joel's generation. OK, so what you're going to do is you're going to take a look at the song and uh, you don't have to analyze the whole thing, which many people have. There's a lot of really good websites out there that are kind of fascinated with this song. But you're going to pick 10 random things um, or 10 things that interest you from the song. And you're going to look them up, you're going to do some research, and you're going to do two things with it. Uh, first of all, you're going to write up a short uh, summary, short but in your own words, not just copy-pasting, of what that, uh, what that particular event or person is. Um, and uh, so factual write-up, just reporting the facts. And then the second thing you're going to do is you're going to reflect on why, why that person or event or whatever is important. Uh, why do you think Billy Joel, Billy Joel chose to include it, or why do you think events like that are important? Okay, uh, so you're going to have a Google Doc, you're going to make a copy, you're going to fill this out with 10 events. And you're also going to look for part two of the lesson, which will apply to next week, but I will definitely put that out before next week. So if you want to kind of maintain your momentum on the lesson, um, you should be able to um, just kind of keep going with it. Okay, uh, if you have any questions, email me. Um, and as I say, I hope you're doing well and, um, I hope to hear from some of you soon. Bye-bye now.